Welcome to the Arcade Informer Show. Today we will be showing you how to connect your Extension Emulator Edition controller to the RetroPie software using Raspberry Pi 3. It's easy and lots of fun. Let's begin. First you will need a Raspberry Pi 3 and RetroPie software installed. Then connect your HDMI cable and your power cable and wait for the boot screen to load. RetroPie will then start up and enter the initial interface. If you already have ROMs installed, then your interface will look like this. If you do not, then it will look like this. Now, connect your Extension Emulator Edition controller's USB cord to the Raspberry Pi. If this is a new RetroPie setup and you've never connected any controller before, once you see this screen, hold down the A button on your Extension Emulator Edition controller. A custom mapping interface will then appear. But pause for a second. If you've already had a different controller set up or need to access the configure input menu again, press player one start, then arrow down with your player one joystick to configure input and press the A button. Then press the A button again to confirm and begin the process. Now hold down the A button to identify the controller. If you have already had a different controller set up and now wish to use the extension controller, you will need to use that controller to navigate to this screen. Once you've reached this screen using your original controller, you will want to press the A button on your extension controller to begin configuring input. Once inside the configuration tab, you will now proceed to custom map your controller for player one. Starting with your player one joystick, press up on your player one joystick to identify this command. The system will automatically move down to the next command and you will want to press down on the player one joystick. Continuing this process, you will want to press left on the player one joystick. To finish off the joystick commands, you will now want to press right. Now you will want to identify your start button by pressing player one start. Identify the select button by pressing select. Identify the action A button by pressing A. Now identify the Action B button by pressing B. And now the Action X button by pressing X. Then the Action Y button by pressing Y. Now the LS button or left shoulder by pressing the button shown. Lastly, the RS button or right shoulder. You can proceed to skip a majority of these remaining buttons by holding down an unused button until you see Not Defined displayed and therefore moving on to the next option. You can continue these steps all the way until the end. For reference, most of these commands you are skipping are not applicable for arcade style gameplay and are primarily used for game pads like Xbox 360 and PS4. For a standard six button arcade style layout, this is the only configuration you will basically need to achieve retro arcade style emulation. If you require additional controls to play more modern emulation, you will want to add an additional handheld controller that offers features like analog thumb movement and additional buttons for more modern gameplay. Moving on to the most important and final step in this configuration, you will want to identify your hotkey as the select button on your controller. Then proceed to press the A button when you are finished and you will return to the RetroPie navigation screen. You will then want to press player one start to access the main menu and arrow down to quit. Proceed to press A and that will take you to the quit option. Press A again to restart emulation station. Press A again to confirm. Emulation station and RetroPie will then reboot and take you directly into the RetroPie main screen. Using the player one joystick, you can arrow left and right to select the emulator you are interested in and then press A to access that emulator. Once inside the emulator, you can use the player one joystick to navigate up and down to select the game you're interested in and press A to open and load the game. Some games will require you to press player one start to begin the game. This is very important. To exit the game, you will need to hold down the select key and player one start at the same time. This is why we enabled the select as the hot key during the mapping process. This will now take you back to the original emulator screen you were once in before you started the game. To exit back to the original emulator selection screen, you will simply press the B button. When using game emulation, it's always good to have the original cartridge of the game you are emulating. 
Now that you have your player 1 set up, player 2 is more advanced and we will show you how to set up your player 2 controls using the MAME emulator. With your player 1 joystick, arrow left and right to locate MAME. There are two versions of the MAME emulator located in the RetroPie default cores. One is titled Lib Retro and the other is MAME for All. You can also identify these two versions in the ROM folders by connecting your Raspberry Pi to the Wi-Fi and accessing through your PC remotely. It is important to note that some MAME emulators work with some ROMs and don't work with others and vice versa. You will simply need to play with this concept by adding ROMs to both folders and seeing which one works for the ROM you have selected. For this tutorial, we're going to use the MAME for All default emulator. Navigate to the MAME for All emulator and press the A button on your controller. Arrow up and down to select a game and press the A button on your controller to open. Any random game will do. Once you have your random game open, press the menu button on your controller. You can also plug in a USB keyboard to your Raspberry Pi and access this menu from the tab key on your keyboard. Once you have this menu open, you will want to select Input General by pressing the Select button on your controller. We will now begin the custom mapping process for Player 2 by navigating down to Player 2 Start and pressing Select on your controller. Then press Player 2 Start on your controller to lock in this command. Now using the Player 1 joystick, navigate down to Coin 2 and press Select on your controller. Then press Player 2 Coin to lock in this command. Now navigate to P2 Up and press Select on your controller. Move the Player 2 joystick in the up direction to lock in this command. Navigate to P2 Down, then press Select on your controller. Move the Player 2 joystick to the down motion to lock in this command. Navigate to P2 Left, press Select on your controller. Now move your Player 2 joystick to the left to lock in. Navigate to P2 Right, press Select on your controller. Then move the Player 2 joystick to the right to lock in. Now navigate to P2 Button 1, then press Select on your controller. Then press the Player 2 Button 1 to lock in. Then navigate to P2 Button 2, press Select on your controller and press button 2 on your player 2 side. Now navigate to P2 button 3, press select on your controller, and press button 3 on the player 2 side. Now navigate to P2 button 4, press select on your controller, and press button 4 on your player 2 side. Do the same for P2 button 5, press select on your controller, and then the button 5 on your player 2 side. Lastly, the P2 button 6, press select on your controller, and then press the 6 button on your player 2 side. You have now successfully mapped all of the Player 2 commands for your MAME for All emulator that will affect all of the games in this particular emulator. To exit this screen, simply press the exit button on your controller. Then with your Player 1 joystick, arrow down to return to game, and then press select or exit on your controller. Congratulations, you are now set up for Player 2 gameplay in the MAME for All emulator. To begin a second player, add a coin by pressing the Coin 2 button, and then press Player 2 Start to enter the game. Now just like your other emulators, to exit the game you will want to hold down Select and Player 1 Start at the same time. We hope you enjoyed this episode on how to set up your Raspberry Pi with RetroPie. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more episodes of the Arcade Informer Show.